Can't you hear me calling? Oh, can't you hear me calling? Oh, oh, oh. Can't you hear me calling? Oh, oh, oh. Praise God, praise God, praise God. Well, welcome everybody. We greet you in Jesus' joy and this new day of the Lord. Amen. Can we just take a moment and just put our hands together and just celebrate the Lord? Amen. Glory to God. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. Great is the Lord and he is greatly to be praised. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I'm excited tonight again and grateful to the Lord to be able to uh, come before you as we gather um, together in this medium of technology. I want to take a moment to greet all those who are on the call tonight. <clears throat> uh, any guests that we might have on, uh, we greet you in Jesus' joy. And to those that will be viewing us live, I mean, rather viewing this replay, um, we greet you in the joy and the love of the Lord. And I'm really excited. It's a, a great time to be alive. <clears throat> And um, excited about what God's doing in this hour. And uh, what's even so amazing um, is that God has purposely planned for us to participate with him in what he's doing in the earth. And uh, so it's such an amazing time um, to be alive. Uh, so at this time, I want to ask um, as we get ready uh, to prepare, um, 
I want to ask um, Evangelist Lisa, are you um, available? Are you able to pray? Yes, sir. Thank you so much. Gracious God, our Father, we bless you, we magnify you, and we praise your holy name. We thank you for this day, oh God, and for this time to gather together, Lord God, to sit at the court tents, oh God, to receive your word, oh God. We thank you right now, oh God, for the illumination, the revelation that you are going to give us through your vessel tonight, Apostle J, oh God, as he dissects this word for us, oh God. Father God, tenderize our hearts, open our ears and our minds, oh God, that we may receive, oh God, that we may hear your voice, Lord God, in every word that is spoken so that we can apply this to our lives. Father God, have your way in this class tonight. We bless you, we praise you. And let this word, oh God, be a word that will shift and change everyone's life who hears it. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you, Evangelist Lisa. Glory to God. Glory to God. I'm excited. Amen. So let's let's get into the word of the Lord tonight. Um, as I say, we are living in such great times. We really are. And irregardless to what we see in the world around about us. Um, as a believer, we know that it is not what we see in the outward realm <clears throat> that we go by, that we live by, that we um, operate by. Um, but Paul said, while we look not at the things which are seen, um, because the things that are seen are made from those things which are not seen. And so we don't live by what we see. The Bible says, as a believer, we walk by faith and not by sight. So uh, I'm excited tonight. So I want to get back into the lesson. We've been talking about being a soldier and more uh, specifically being a soldier of Jesus Christ. And as I thought about it, what's interesting is that while uh, we, the Spirit of God has had us in this uh, on this topic, um and dealing with this uh biblical truth uh excuse me one moment please um and dealing with this particular biblical truth when i began to reflect on what we see um in the outward realm and remember i said that we don't judge by what we see from the outside we judge by what we see from the realm um the invisible realm the realm of eternity in the spirit um, and then we we view out. But what's interesting is um, much of what we have seen or or are seeing um, has to do with warfare. We're, we're seeing soldiers. Even um, I was looking at today, even um, the the warfare um, in terms of Russia and Ukraine. And um, just a little side note. Um, as it relates to that, even um, given what we are seeing happen. Um, there is a, um, there was a division, there was a confrontation that happened in Russia, <clears throat> um, in the armies that, that was there. Um, and when we look at Ukraine, and I know most of us, we, we have been praying even when this, from the beginning of this war, um, for the, the people of God, because there are saints in Ukraine and um, praying that God would strengthen and keep and preserve and protect them. But even seeing this turn of events, um, I saw it as a prophetic, um, a prophetic um, statement that I believe the Lord is saying that um, in terms of how God drew strategy, and um, this is a word um, uh, Prophet Karen mentioned on Sunday in a message talked about strategy how the strategy of the Lord um, caused this um, this confrontation in the camp of 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 an ad, ad, I will say adversarial um, uh, opponent because you know Ukraine and Russia they are at odds um, and so we see this change this 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 um, confrontation that happens in the its own camp. And so prophetically, I really see how that even as it relates to us as soldiers of Jesus Christ and in the army of the Lord, how that when we stand in the word of the Lord, 
um, as a soldier and we endeavor to do what God has called us to do, um, I do believe that that is a picture of what happens um, in the camp of an enemy, whatever the enemy might be that is uh, maybe opposing us at the time or whether it is a, a situation or an enemy that God um, has ordained for us um, to use the um, the word and the weapons of, uh, of our warfare against. And so I wanted to use that uh, as an example to, to say, listen, listen, that that is a physical picture of what can happen during a time of warfare when there is a a warfare engaged that when we stand in the power and the might and the strength of God, God works on the behalf of the believer and will cause something like that to happen. The Bible says it like this, what the enemy meant for evil, God will turn it around and make it work for your good for the purpose of saving much people alive. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And so I want you, um, if you're listening at the sound of my voice, listen, listen, take heart. No matter what confrontations or what trials and tribulation, what adversity you may be in the midst of or encountering, amen. Don't let the enemy just, in other words, don't let the sight and don't let the resistance, the, the, the force of this confrontation cause you to fear or shrink back, but just understand that you are a soldier of the Most High God. That not only are you on the winning side, <laughs> you have the one who eliminates all war. God, let me say this, God has no equal. Let me say it again. God has no equal. And if God has no equal, God has no opponent. You say, well, the kingdom of darkness is at war against the kingdom of light. No, 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 no. The kingdom of light is at war with the kingdom of darkness. And Satan cannot be an opponent. You say, well, well, Pastor, how can you say Satan is not an opponent, opponent very easily? If I created something, how can what I created be an opponent to me? Okay. If I created it, if I made it, how is no way it can be an opponent to me because I created it. And so I want to encourage us, amen, as we move into this, uh, um, this truth of, of being a soldier of Jesus Christ, that it is from this present truth revelation that we approach being a soldier and in going into any type of warfare. We, 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 we read on uh, last Tuesday in 2 Corinthians 2.14, how the Bible says that God, uh, thanks be unto God who always causes us to triumph, always causes us to triumph and gives us victory and makes manifest the fragrance or the, uh, uh, the savor, that word savor means fragrance, makes manifest or, or brings to light or makes known the fragrance of, the, of his knowledge through us. Watch this in every place we are. So every place you and I are, it is the desire of God that the knowledge of God, the fragrance of his now of the knowledge of God, that fragrance of victory, whether that's in peace, whether that's joy, um, uh, whether that's in wisdom, whether that's in knowledge, whether that's in understanding, all of this is all components of victory. And God wants that to be known wherever you and I are um, when, it, when we're in a place of contention. So let's let's move, amen, because my time is not waiting for me. Glory to God. Amen. So let's um let's let's begin to um um uh, tonight. I want to begin um if someone can get for me Colossians chapter one and um Starting at verse uh, 13, 
and we'll read verse 13 through 16, 13 through 16. And um, if someone can also um, give for me Colossians chapter 2, verse 13 through 15. And we'll begin there tonight. As I was preparing tonight for the class, um, the Holy Spirit dropped this down when he started reminding me. Um, and this is something he's been doing um, uh, quite a bit lately. Not that I didn't know, but you know, the Holy Spirit will always reinforce, reaffirm. And it is always whenever the Holy Spirit says something to us, whether it's once, twice, or whatever, anytime the Holy Spirit says something to us, or it is through the word of the Lord, um, preaching of the word, teaching of the word, and the Holy Spirit begins to highlight something to us, we should always take at, um, um, and reverence the word of the Lord and understand that there is a purpose and a reason for why God causes us to be in the vicinity or in the area or in the midst of a word. God never wastes anything. Whenever God brings us into the company of his word, there is always a purpose and a reason. And, you know, we have found that it is always, um, always to develop. It is always to build. It is always uh, to validate our faith, to strengthen us in our faith and to take us from faith to faith, from glory to glory. Um, at the same time, it is also to prepare us and equip us. Because when the word comes, we have to we have to realize that whenever the word comes, there's always a a battle that comes afterwards. Uh, to give you an example, the Bible says that when Jesus when John saw Jesus and Jesus comes to John, and John says, "Behold, the Lamb of God who um, who um, who takes away the sins of the world," and so Jesus comes to John to be baptized. So as John baptizes Jesus, the Bible says that the heavens uh, open, that the voice of God the Father sounded and said, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. The Bible says that the dove landed on Jesus. Now the difference is, and I, I want to go into too deep into this, but, but there's a whole revelation behind the dove landing on Jesus and it stayed. The dove is a representation of the Holy Spirit. And, and the Bible says that the Holy Spirit landed on Jesus, but it did not lift. And if you remember in um, Genesis with Noah, when the, 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 the dove was sent out, the dove came back because there was no place found suitable from the land. So that was a typology that when Jesus, the son of God, the one who had come to take away the sins of the world, the dove found a resting place and did not have to live. Okay, so I'm, I'm going to leave that right there. But the Bible says that after Jesus was baptized, that it was the Holy Spirit that led Jesus directly into the wilderness. The next step after Jesus, his, his, his acknowledgement as the Son of God, his identification and his ordination, um, and, and baptism, all of that, after all of that, the Holy Spirit did not lead Jesus anywhere out to start a ministry. The first place he went was he, the Holy Spirit led him into the wilderness for a time of confrontation with uh, the kingdom of darkness. So just to show us that even uh, when we talk about warfare, this is not something that's new. It's throughout the, the word. And uh, so let, let's go. Um, does someone have um, Colossians chapter one? Um, what did I say? Verse thirteen. Yes. I have it, Apostle. Okay. Can you read it, please? Yes, sir. He has delivered us from the power of darkness and conveyed us into the kingdom of the son of his love in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sin. 
He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. For by him, all things were created that are in heaven and that are on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created through him and for him. Okay, um, can you also read verse 20, please? Verse 20? Yes. <clears throat> um, and by him to reconcile all things to himself, by him, whether things on earth or things in heaven, having made peace through the blood of his cross. Okay, so, so before we get to uh, Colossians chapter two, so I want to just kind of establish the point or reestablish or reaffirm, I guess I should say, the fact of when we talk about being a soldier of Jesus Christ and understanding that warfare is a part of our lot. I want us to see even, um, even out of the scripture in Colossians 1, I want you to see some of the origin um, that has to do with warfare as it relates to um, Jesus' work and our um benefit if you will <clears throat> and also our um lot or right <clears throat> as it relates to warfare because the bible says that it, that um we have been delivered out of the power of darkness and translated into the kingdom of his dear son which is a warfare in and of itself it's it's the 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 picture of someone being a a prey, um, a captive, being um, victim <clears throat> to a prey, and then you have someone else who is stronger <clears throat> comes. The Bible says of David that David, um, in his testimony of exploits, said that when he was watching his father's sheep, that at one time there was a lion <clears throat> that came to, to, to devour uh, one of the sheep. And, and David literally grabs the lion <clears throat> and rescues the sheep out of the mouth of the lion, which is a typology of what Christ has done for us through salvation, that he has reached in the mouth of an adversary, a devourer, to, to deliver us out of. So it was not something that just happened. There was a confrontation, there was a warfare, there was an exertion of power that caused this to happen. So there was an exerting of the power of God through Jesus <clears throat> that caused us to be taken out of the mouth of the devourer <clears throat> and placed in a place of safety and a uh, place of safety, destinate, destination, and um, um, the Bible says um, that we were in preordination, that we were preordained to this, <clears throat> excuse me. So I want you to see this um, and then recognize the power of it. And then verse 20 says, <clears throat> and according to the King, King James Version said, and having made peace through the blood. So I want us to see here that peace came not from being a keeper of peace. The blood of Jesus in a military act made peace. Okay. And for the purpose of reconciliation or bringing back, um, restoring back to, um, to God the Father. Okay. Um, does anyone have any questions or comments? Okay. Does someone have Colossians chapter two, verse 13? I have it across. Okay, thank you. Okay, so this is two and 13. Okay. Um, and you being dead in your trespasses, and the uncircumcision of your flesh. He has made alive together with him, having forgiven you all trespasses, 
having wiped out the handwriting of requirements that was against us, which was contrary to us. And he has taken it out of the way, having nailed it to the cross. Having disarmed principalities and powers, he made a public spectacle of them triumphing over them in it. Okay, so now being a soldier of Jesus Christ means that we have to understand that everything that in our, our, our life before Christ have already been dealt with completely, okay? We have to know this truth that there was a, a, a confrontation, there was a warfare, there was a military um, a strategic um, uh, exploit, I'll say, that God the Father through Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit worked in order to deal with, um, it talks about ordinations or things that were against us, legal things that the enemy had against us, legal rights. And those of you who work in the courts um, or have any idea, uh, have any um, experience with courts, understands the legality of things, how courts operate, their legalities, their things that, that are legal rights um, that, that can be enforced in a court, their rights or things that can be enforced in a court simply because of its legality. And so Satan um, had legal rights, but, but Jesus, this military expedition, um, um, it obliterated by the blood of Jesus these legal rights, every legal right the enemy had has been abolished completely. And what's so amazing to show that they have been completely done away with, abolished or canceled out, the, the paper, the legal paper or document, if you will, that stated the legalities of Satan or the legal obligations of Satan against our life was nailed to the cross of Jesus. You know, you know how like you take something and nail it up on a cross, um, one so that it can be read, and then it is identified um, also with what what the source that demolished it. And he said he made an open show of it. So you said, well, Pastor, why, why is this important? Because you have to understand that if you're going to be a soldier of Jesus Christ and we're in this war against the kingdom of darkness, the, the enemy will try to raise up old things. The enemy will try to bring back old things. And you have to know, you have to know as a soldier that this truth says that everything about your former life, your former nature, was nailed against the cross. In other words, so that you and I would know that it does not have the power that the enemy wants us to think that it has. Unless we 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 give into it, and and if you give into it, then what you and I are doing, we are breathing life back into a dead thing and giving it permission to operate. So you have to know because whenever as a soldier of Jesus Christ, when you and I go to war, in other words, to execute righteousness, the righteousness of God. And whenever we go, you know, we're living for God and we're doing the things that the word of God is telling us to do. The enemy will try to come back at you with old things, old situations, sometimes old memories, old feelings um, um, to try to create a reason or a doubt. Um, or a, an a fear, a doubt um, that that ultimately, if it's not put in check or if it's not brought down, um, it will lead to unbelief. And so we have to we have to know this truth. Amen. And I believe even on Sunday, um, um, I believe in part of the message, Prophet Karen mentioned about um, 
about not going back to old things or not giving into old things. Um, and so, but it's important that we know this truth so that we do not feel as if there's something left undone. Okay. So let's move forward. Um, unless someone has a question or comment. Apostle, I was going to say, even um, with dealing with old things, sometimes they might come in a different package. So you got to recognize the attributes of those old things because it might come in a different package or a different way, um, but it still is old, no matter how dressed up or how different it might look. When you recognize the attributes of that thing, then, then you can cast it down. Then you can resist it as, as a, a strong soldier in, um, of Jesus Christ. But you have to recognize every aspect of it um, when it starts to show back up. Kind of like when you start to see symptoms of a cold or symptoms of a sickness, you, you start to combat it early so that it doesn't escalate rather than just ignore it and let it just keep going and going. Now it's a, a big storm and you're like, I thought there was a storm. I thought there was a fire. You know, I thought that was, you know, those those pains, you know, um, sometimes when 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 those things begin to show up because it might not look like what what we have dealt with before, but the attributes of, of, of it are still the same. Amen. 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 In listening to uh, Prophet Nat, I was thinking about some of those old things that will pop up sometimes will come from people. And people will have a habit of bringing up old dead things. Remember when you used to do this. I remember when we used to do that. Even that we have to pull down immediately. I always say people want to keep you where they meet you because a lot of times they don't look for the growth. They don't want to see, not look for it, but they don't want to see it. They don't want to even acknowledge it. And we can always force them to acknowledge where we are now, but we can let the enemy know. The enemy is working through them. It's the spirit of the enemy through working through them to try to bring us back and bring up the old memories and the old things. And we also have to pull that down as well. Yes, that's what I used to do. Yes, that you who I used to be, but I am no longer that. And pull that down. Now I am. Now I I don't do those things anymore. We have to be cognizant of that as well, because sometimes the old things might just be old people uh, that the enemy is using. Amen. Great point. Great points. Anyone else? And that's a that's a, a great point um, because again, the enemy sometimes will, and part of his strategy uh, um, as an attack against you will will have you run into somebody you knew from the past. Um, but you have to understand that they, when you run into them, that they are exactly that. They are still the past, but the past is not you. Because the Bible says any creature, like any man being Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away and all things have become new. So they can only they, they can only relate to when they meet you again, they can only relate to the past because they do not have a current update of who you are in Christ. And that's an opportunity of a witness. And so sometimes the enemy tries to bring that, you know, as um, well, if they see you this way, then that's how things are. No, the devil is a liar. The Bible says even of Jesus that when Jesus was um, doing the will of his father and working miracles, um, the enemy tried to bring that kind of phrase up. And they said, well, isn't he the carpenter, the son? Isn't he Joseph, the carpenter's son? Didn't, didn't he come from Nazareth? And they were like, well, can any good thing come out of Nazareth? So because of Nazareth, the, the narrative in Nazareth being a place that is not desirable or a place where obviously bad things happen, 
So knowing that Jesus comes out of Nazareth, so they're associating him with that. So the statement is, can any good thing come out of Nazareth? And so sometimes based on where you have come from in life, um, the, 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 the enemy can try to put um, a negative um, uh, shadow or a negative word or thought or phrase or feeling um, about that. But you have to understand that you are not your past. That if you are, if you are, if you are, uh, even if the enemy brings your past to you, the thoughts of your past, that is an indication to you. You're already on on the other side. Let me say it again. If the enemy brings your past to you, the first indication and awareness should be that you're on the other side. Because how can you see your past unless you're on the other side of it? Because otherwise you'd be saying, I'm looking at my present. So, but I'm not looking at my present. I'm looking at my past because I'm on the other side of it. And so, so don't let the enemy um, make you lose ground <clears throat> um, to old information that's no longer relevant in your life. Because <clears throat> he'll do that to try to distract you, to get you off course <clears throat> um, from whatever it is the assignment of the Lord is. Um, for your life. So I wanted to deal with this word order, um, and I'm going to move um, here. The word order, according to depths of the, the definition for the word order, means the arrangement or disposition of people or things in relation to each other, according to a particular sequence, pattern, or method. And so the, the key um, focus of that definition is that when we talk about the word order, the word order can mean <clears throat> a particular sequence or pattern um, that people um, or things are arranged in um, according to whatever purpose or method or whatever um, um, whatever the purpose is. Number two, it's an authoritative command direction or instruction to do something, okay? So since we're talking about being a soldier of Jesus Christ, <clears throat> the Bible declares in Psalm 37, 23, that the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord and he, God, delights in his way. Also in Proverbs 16 and nine, we read that although a man's heart deviseth his way, and that word divisive there means to make decisions or to plan your path in life. Um, nevertheless, it is God who directs his steps, which means for us as a believer of Jesus Christ, when we are obeying the word of the Lord, it is not our enemy <clears throat> that's in control of or decides what happens in our life, but it's God. And so when I thought about that word order, um, even in that word order that the, that the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord gives us this understanding um, because the word order or orders is a military term that's used to describe how information regarding a soldier's lifestyle, activities, operations, relationships, movement, and assignments are communicated and received. Okay, so as a soldier, things move in the military based upon orders. And, um, and in the military, you are considered no considered to be, uh, excuse my typo, you are considered to be no longer your own. Um, can someone get for me first Corinthians? Uh, chapter 6, verse 19 and 20. And um, if you could, um, that HC is the Holman um, uh, translation or the message, um, either or. And while you're getting that, so in the military, you're considered uh, to no longer be your own. And uh, you're, you, you're required to follow the orders that are issued to you as it relates to you as a soldier. <clears throat> and according to the purpose and mission of whatever branch of service you serve in. 
Apostle. Yes. Uh, I'm thinking as you were talking and even about the uh, the other conversation uh, from uh, Prophet Natalie and Evangelist Lisa, I'm, I'm thinking that um, a lot of times when we get in these situations, we're on the defensive. But in the military, we're not always on the defensive, we're on the offensive. And so uh, Paul, I, I was thinking about Paul who moved on the offensive when he got before people, before they had opportunity to tell him who he used to be <laughs> because his steps were ordered by the Lord and he knew who he was going to be in the midst of. He told about himself and what he used to be before they even had opportunity to. So he kind of took the steam, you know, out of them because he came and told them who he used to be and who he was now. And so rather than being on the defensive, there were times that Paul went on the offensive and said, hey, I used to, you know, persecute people. I used to do this. I used to do that. But now I've been translated and here's what I do. So uh, we don't always have to be on the offensive. When I was looking at, you were saying our steps are ordered by the Lord. When you know that you're, for instance, you're going to a family reunion or you're going somewhere where you're going to be around people who used to know you, but who don't know you now, rather than being on the defensive, it's a good opportunity for us then to be on the, prepare ourselves and be on the offense. And again, that takes the steam out of anything that the enemy was planning. Amen. Amen. Great point. <clears throat> Great point. Um, Paul even said on one occasion, he said, um, in talking to the church, and we know <clears throat> in uh, quite a few of Paul's writings, he would say, I, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ. So establishing who he was in God in relation to the people. And when we talk about order, and we, and we said one of the definitions of the word order is a, a, an arrangement and disposition of people and things. And so as he opens his letters with our Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, called to the will um, by, uh, by the will of God, um, the Father, he is establishing a sequence, an order, a pattern, um, and it's according to the word of the Lord. And um, another case, um, like you said, uh, Prophet Karen, where Paul said, yeah, at one point I was zealous of the law. He said, so if anybody had a reason to, you know, in the flesh to brag, so to speak, I'm um, just paraphrasing, um, I was zealous of the law, persecuting and doing all of these things. Uh, and so he was, um, like, like you said, making that point known. So that's who I used to be. So when people bring up things like, yeah, that, that's what I used to be. <clears throat> But that's not who I am now. And it takes the sting out of, like you said, um, the enemy trying to utilize that as a point of attack. Um, it diffuses that. Great point. Anyone I else? That, I think that's also a great idea too, when if you are a person who is accustomed to or or used to be known, I won't say accustomed to, someone who used to be known for um, being talked down to and people knew you as someone who would just shrink back when people would come up and talk to you. I remember you used to do this and I remember you used to do that. And then you are, they're accustomed to you withdrawing because they're used to talking to you that way. And they're used to you being uh, feeling rejected and abandoned and, and, and feeling offended and used to you just you know shrinking because it makes other makes the spirit of the enemy in them makes them feel good about bringing somebody down that would be a great time to say you know to boldly speak up and say yep that's who I was and cut them off and don't even let them finish but cut them off and say yes but let me tell you how God has transformed my life let me tell you how God is, has, has brought me through all of that and begin to tell them who you are now. Because I've seen it happen. Um, I, I watched someone who was known to be quiet and very meek in their spirit. And someone who, if, when people would talk negative to them because they wouldn't speak up for themselves. And this other person was being used by the enemy as a bully. 
and began to run down all the things and just talk negative to them. And I was like, if they would just open their mouth and just say something, you know, like that's not where I am anymore because I knew the growth the other person had come through. And I'm like, if they just, this is a great time to just say something. And it's a great time. And that's a time for what we call testimony. That is a time to give our, the testimony of the Lord and how he has built us up and brought us through and where we are now. Amen. And, you know, when you do that, um, also uh, another um, way, another way that that diffuses um, that that subtle attack of the enemy against your character and um, your your life and life and who you are is that it's a, it, it helps us not to um, to receive any kind of shame. or to resist the temptation of being offended that they're bringing it up. See, because we have to always remember again, that is a, someone or a situation um, that is representative of the past. And if you know that you are create new creation in Christ Jesus, even though something from the past is brought up, um, that, that, you should not, you should resist, you and I should resist that temptation to um, feel or sense or receive any shame and to also resist the temptation of being offended. And um, even while I was talking, I thought about how the Spirit of God um, um, in prayer gave me the strategy um, that we, um, we, we all did um, in reference to a uh, blessing um, and in terms of blessing the past instead of you know, making decrees and declaring over oh, the past and the settling and establishing that the past <clears throat> um, is that it's the past. And when you bless it, that word blessing means to eulogize. You put it to, you put it in a place where the benediction eulogize it, you speak well of it, and then you're able to move past it. And the reason we were able to do that, because we understand that everything God brought us through that became our past, the fact is that God brought us through it. And on this side of it, it becomes an opportunity. It's no longer a badge of shame um, or remorse or any of those kinds of things. It now becomes a tool of witness and testimony. Great point. Apostle. Yes. And so, you know, our thoughts, it doesn't even have to be someone else. It could be a day of the week. It could be uh, an incident or something that happens at work. Um, uh, say that, you know, uh, well, all of us at one point was in sin uh, or you had an addiction, you had something, and that's how you handled it in the past. You didn't know, uh, maybe when I got angry or this would happen, I would go out and have a drink or do this. And so there are triggers that can happen and the enemy will come in and begin to uh, use that trigger to try to get you to revert to your old patterns. And so I like what you're saying, this reminder when we say, I'm no, I'm not alone, I'm no longer, I'm, I, I, know, I, I don't belong to me anymore. You know, I, 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 I don't belong to the enemy anymore. I, I changed partners and now I belong to the Lord. So I cannot obey that other voice. You know what I'm saying? That will cause me to go back to that old pattern. I don't belong to me anymore. You know, I have someone else who owns me. Okay. And, and my body now is the temple. The Holy Ghost is in me. I'm righteous. I cannot afford to indulge in something that can take me back to that old path. And so sometimes it's not even people, it could just be a trigger. Anything could, to, can, to, could trigger you. You could be driving down the street again, like I said, somebody cut you off, you know, road rage. And then there are some things you wanna do, but then we have to remember I'm not my own. And so I cannot respond the way I used to because I am no longer 
a product or a protege of the enemy. I am a product, like a, a, a Paul would say, I belong to the Lord Jesus Christ now. That, that's who I belong to, and that's who in me, and I have to represent him in that way. Amen. Amen. Because we are no longer a victim through um, what, 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 what uh, in Colossians 1, um, 20 says that peace was made by the blood of Jesus. So we are no longer a victim. We are victorious. And we have to know that that's why, um, you know, uh, um, I really felt under the unction of the Holy Spirit to uh, start our class out with that, that truth um, of who Christ is. And that is always the position, the mindset, um, like, like Paul uh, wanted to status with his son Timothy, the mindset, the position, um, and to equip him with this truth as a soldier, um, that we're not, uh, we're not a victim. We're already victorious, but we have been made victorious by God who is the power. There is none other greater than him. <clears throat> and and the blessing is that being in Christ and being a partaker of the divine nature and given the and being uh, uh, filled with the power of God, the, uh, Paul calls it the exceeding greatness of His power on the inside of us means that we have um, the God of all creation inside of us. And who can change what God has said? Um, if we go back even in Genesis, um, Satan's tactic towards Eve was to cast a shadow of doubt on the word of God to cause there to be doubt. He said, have God said. And, and the moment there is a inkling or place or space of doubt then the enemy can gain a foothold because doubt, fear, doubt, and unbelief does not belong to the Lord. And so, so when the enemy brings these thoughts up and he tries to validate his case, um, listen, you got to know, um, according to Colossians 2, 13, it was all nailed to the cross. Every, or every legality that Satan could ever consider was nailed to the cross. And, 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 and Jesus made made an open show of it. it it wasn't anything done in the secret it wasn't anything done in the closet this was done openly so that all men would know so we talking about having this kind of power and and being a soldier in this army and so you have to resist it because the enemy will come against your mind with those those thoughts and again he will bring stuff from the past he, you know uh, failures or weaknesses or things that you might have had challenges with in the past or whatever he he will he'll try everything you know how like they that phrase is like they say he, he do everything every, everything including the kitchen sink <laughs> yeah that's a phrase they use um to say that they, everything was thrown in so satan will launch everything that he can um for that god but we you have to be established to know that you know as a soldier of jesus christ that you you're already redeem um anyone else uh, does someone have uh first corinthians 6 verse 19 and 20. i do um out of the hallman bible okay thank you so much mm -hmm. don't you know that your body is a sanctuary of the holy spirit who is in you, whom you have from God. You are not your own, for you were brought at a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body. Amen. And King James says, in, and in your spirit, which are God's, which means if you don't belong to yourself, you don't belong to Satan. We belong to God. Okay. Um, so 
when we make decisions based on the word of God, and when we're talking about a soldier, we're talking about um, orders, because the Bible says that the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delights in his way. This is why God delights in the way, the path, the steps of a good man, because their steps are ordered according to the word of God, the heart and the desire of God. And how that happens is when we obey the word of the Lord and we make decisions in life and we do things in life based upon the word of the Lord, it is the word of God that is directing our way, that's ordering our steps and um, leading us in that way that Jeremiah 20, 29, 11 talks about. He says, I know the thoughts and the plans that I have towards you to do you good and not evil, to bring you to an expected end. So when we are as a soldier following the orders of God's word, um, then they direct our steps. And I think that's, that's important because again, um, going back to when Jesus was baptized of John and he was led into the wilderness, Oftentimes, um, some some believers are um, are caught off guard, I would say, or um, are overcome because their understanding is that they're not going to be led um, uh, or not going to enter into a time of confrontation. And that's not what the Bible says. The Bible says many are the afflictions of the righteous, but that three letter word overrides, overpowers, cancel out, and makes what comes after it the priority and the preeminence. He says, but God will make a way of escape. And we know that way of escape is, is uh, God himself. Jesus said in John, he said, I am the way, the truth, and the light. So as a soldier, when we find ourselves in times of difficulty and challenge, we have to make sure that we are still following after the word of the Lord, that even though we might enter into a time of adversity and a time of challenge, but just know that you're not entering into it uncovered, unprotected, because you have the word of the Lord and you already have victory. And so it's about establishing victory in that place. And even while we were talking about um, the enemy bringing old things to your mind, old ways, old, old mindsets um, um, or triggers. Um, listen, let me tell you something. That word, that word trigger, um, as you go through life as a believer, there are always, hear me, there are always going to be triggers of something where the enemy will try to remind uh, or try to bring up or some kind of way, there will always be triggers, but you have to know that you have power over the triggers and that you do not have to succumb to the suggestion of those triggers. You are already overcome because Christ Jesus overcame. So what we are doing is we are walking out in real time, minute by minute, circumstance by circumstance, that victory and, um, um, and manifesting it in every part of our life, wherever we are. Um, does anyone have any questions or comment? Okay. Okay. Amen. Well, we are we're at our time, and um, thank you to everybody that joined on the call tonight. If there are no other questions or comments, I um, just want to take a minute. If there's no other questions. Um, then just know as a soldier of Jesus Christ, there is uh, so much more um, that I wanted to get to. Um, it really is a very, um, there's so much to being a soldier, so many things that we can um, address in terms of being a soldier of Jesus Christ. Um, but to know that Christ in you, he's the exceeding greatness of God's power on the inside of you and that God has already mandated us to win. 
And um, and like I said, I really um, I was um, blessed today by the prophetic implication that I saw um, when I saw this <clears throat> um, the situation with the armies, um, because the Spirit of God reminded me. He says that when you resist the enemy, that God will send division and and cause contention and chaos and all of these things to go back from whence it came. It will go back into the camp from which it came out of and create um, and cause um, and do its works there. And so um, be of good cheer. Jesus said in John 16, 33, he said to the disciples, he said, um, these words have I spoken to you that in me, you might have peace. He said, in the world, you have tribulation. He said, well, be of good cheer. I've already overcome it. And that is the mindset of a soldier. In him, we have peace. We have peace in him and we have peace in us because he's in us and he's already overcome. And so we, we um, approach or we live life as a soldier from the mindset we have already overcome through Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior. So thank you to everybody that joined. Um, have a great rest of the night. <laughs> and um, I pray the blessing and the favor of the Lord be upon you. The Lord bless and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you. May the Lord be gracious unto you and give you peace. May the Lord bless you in such a way that the exceeding greatness of his power will cause you to exceed and to excel and override every situation that to him be the glory. Amen. Have a great night. Love you all. Tonight, we are fully persuaded that what he had promised, that he will perform it. I'll say it again. Tonight we are fully persuaded that what he had promised, he will perform it. Okay, okay. Let's see how much you're gonna eat this scroll. We are fully persuaded that what he had promised, he will perform it. I am fully persuaded that what he had promised that he will perform it. He promised to save my family. He will perform it. He promised to see me through college. He will perform it. He promised that my name would be upon every street, every corner. He will perform it. He promised that I'd be the head and not the tail. He will perform it. I am persuaded that what he had promised, that he will perform it. Do I have any persuaded people in here tonight? Are you persuaded by the word? Are you persuaded by what he said to you? Are you persuaded that you are healed? That by his stripes you were already healed? Let Romans 4 and 21 prophesy to you that I am fully persuaded that what he, not a man, not a system, not a homie, not a hookup, but I am fully persuaded that what he has promised I can fly off of that right there I'm a Bible baby I can fly off of that right there this is your prophetic word that we will be a generation that is fully persuaded that what God has promised that he will perform it so father we receive the word lift your hands now we receive your promises for all your promises in you are yes and amen and we are fully persuaded that you will perform it in our lifetime we will not wait another day we will not await another decade we will not be old and gray-haired waiting for a promise that you've made to us but we will see it and we 
we will enjoy it.